All right, Facebook family, we thank you once again for joining us for another lesson of the Believer's Authority. Now, tonight's lesson is entitled, Be a Witness. Be a Witness. Okay. So basically what we want to do is we want to examine what a witness is and what are the rights and the responsibilities of a witness. Okay. So let's look at point one. Jesus told his disciples, you will have power to be a witness. So let's go to Acts 1, Acts 1 and 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And it reads, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me in both Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now, when we read that verse, ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses. When you hear that word witness, what comes to mind? Well, it used to be talking, now I think lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Testimony. Mm -hmm. Testimony. Yeah, witness tells what happened. Jesus. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just telling people what Jesus means to you and what he's done for you. Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So basically, a witness is one who gives an account That's right. mm -hmm. of what they've experienced or what they've seen, mm -hmm. right? And they're living the life. And they're living the life. And I like that you said that. I like that you let it said that because that's that's a part of our witness, not just the proclamation. I've met a lot of people that had had testimony, but they weren't living the life. Mm -hmm. In fact, the first time I heard somebody say, "Praise the Lord," he said it as he was exhaling from a Marlboro cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> now what does what does that do to the witness? What does that do to the to the person that is hearing the testimony? Well, when he did it, when he did it to me, and I wasn't saved yet, and he was talking about the Lord, and he took a big drag and he said, Praise the Lord. And I had never heard anyone say that. And I thought, that's a strange thing to say. Mm -hmm. But then I thought, if God's so powerful, how come he can't help you with those weeds? But that was my thought. Now, I smoked too, but I didn't think that about me. I thought that about him. You need God to help you quit. But yeah. I wasn't thinking about quitting. Yeah. I mean, and that's a good point. I like that because, see, what happens is, and, you know, we, we, want, we don't want to be legalistic, right? However, when we talk about lifestyle, we talk about bearing fruit, the effect that it has on our testimony is detrimental. Think about a courtroom, okay? Now, uh, a lawyer puts a witness on the stand. The witness gives their testimony. Now, the cross-examining lawyer, what does the cross-examining lawyer often do? They try to damage the credibility right. of the mm -hmm. witness. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're, you're, you're damaging the credibility of the witness. So that's what uh, a sloppy, flesh-filled life, that's what that does but for a witness. Like I said, that's one of those things that you won't find in the Bible. That's one of those principles, if you will, where people say you shouldn't do things that hurt your body. That's what's one of these. Like I said, if you go back 60, 70 years, back when tobacco was everywhere, every Christian everywhere was smoking, they were doing everything. Now we feel we're enlightened and say, oh, that's not good for you. And that's this and this. So that's a different type of a thing. That could be the same as overeating or doing too much sleeping or. Well, let's let's well let's step back up. though. Let's step back. Let's step back because mm -hmm. we you know because we can nitpick and talk about specific yeah. little night lifestyle things, but what we're really talking about in a general sense is things that are contrary to the fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Anything that's anything that we do or say that mm -hmm. is contrary to the fruit of the spirit is contrary to the to the to the Christ that's living on the inside of us, mm -hmm. and that's really what we mean. Now, see, we do get in trouble when we try to look at other people and say, okay, you playing cards. You know that's of the devil. 
right. Like or or somebody, you know, somebody has a, a pack of Newports. Okay. But he now, makes a good point, though. Look at look at those things that are the fruit of the spirit. Mm. If you're living contrary to those, that's a clear damage to your witness. What, what Not one. No, I'm talking about just any behavior like that's contrary. No, no, see, we we not yeah we we not we not we not talking, talking about, about the smoking okay, specifically. Love, joy, no, I, I smoked and that guy that did that. My first thought was, why can't this powerful guy help you with that? I wouldn't mm -hmm. condemn him. I was just thinking, you're telling me how great God is and he can do all this. And that's a, that's a real life example. That's a real life example. No, it wasn't the cigarettes. It was like, well, everybody knows they're not good for you. We used mm -hmm. to say, put another nail in our coffin, light a cigarette. Right. But that's a real life example of what, of of what being a witness, the responsibility that we do have. You know what I'm saying? Because, and I'm gonna go back to Romans 14. Let's go to Romans 14. And I'm gonna read it out of Amplified. I'm gonna start at verse one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it says, As for the one who is whose faith is weak, mm -hmm. accept him into your fellowship, but not for the purpose of quarreling over his opinions. Mm -hmm. One man's faith permits him to eat everything. While the weak believer eats only vegetables, those weak vegetarians <laughs> to <laughs> avoid eating ritually unclean meat or something previously considered unclean. The one who eats everything is not to look down on the one who does not eat, and the one who does not eat must not criticize or pass judgment on the one who eats everything, for God has accepted him. Who are you to judge this servant of another? Before his own master, he stands approved or falls out of favor. And he who serves the master, the Lord will stand, for the Lord is able to make him stand. Verse 5, one person regards one day as better or more important than another, while another regards every day the same as any other. Let everyone be fully convinced, assured, and satisfied in his own mind. Now see, I like that Gene said that about the whole smoking thing. Now, in Christ, what? Paul says, all things are lawful, right, for me. But all things are not expedient, not profitable. See, me puffing a drag in front of a new believer is not profitable for him. And as I, as I grow, as we grow as believers, being conscious of those things, those things that may be questionable. Why am I going to do that out in public when I'm around other people and around new believers or unbelievers and they, they know that I am a follower of Jesus Christ? That's me dying to myself and saying, you know what? I'm free to smoke a new part. Okay. Because the Bible doesn't say thou shalt not smoke new parts. But why am I going to do that on public? I don't see any problem. Why, but why am I going to do that on public when I know that type of reaction now, how is... Come, how come I responded to that guy that way? I was a smoker, a drinker, a drugger. <laughs> no, I enjoyed doing all that stuff when this no, guy no. was inhaling and blowing that smoke out. I but thought, you understood there's, there's something different about Christians. Yeah, I thought yeah. Christians, Christian people yeah. shouldn't be involved in all this and stuff. And let's, let's, let's make the distinction that it's not about, well, that's wrong for you to do that. See, we're under grace. And that's why, that's why you brought up those scriptures. We're under grace. But the balance, and, and I'm just trying to process this myself, mm -hmm. is that ultimately, if you are a true believer and you're a disciple of Christ, mm -hmm. your he's your source. That's for everything. The reality is people who find comfort in smoking, drinking, whatever it may be, to take the edge off, whatever the term we use, that's that's become their source. And that and and so the distinction for us and our lifestyle is that. God is everything for us. Mm -hmm. He's right. our peace. And then it goes back to the fruit we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we can get into splitting hairs all day about, well, if you do this, then you're not a good witness. It's not about that. It's about that true relationship with him um, creating a different lifestyle as a byproduct 
Mm -hmm. I yeah. look at that in a different way. I'm just saying, I think in America today, there's so much freedom to do everything. People are talking about these little things. It's like you can go over to those big food places and you see those people, they're gorging themselves over all this food. Gluttony, those type things are written in the Bible as being sinful. And yet, you know, we don't even talk about those things. They're not comfortable. People. So that to me is more the nitpicking stuff in essence of, of majoring on the minor that that's a non-issue to me because at the end of the day, if you look at people in reality, they are looking at Christians today quite different and they're, I mean, it's like they're looking at, you know, what do you really stand for? What are you really doing? This is such a free type of country today. They don't even, I mean, it's like, you can say what you want to do. Guys can be girls. Girls can be... I mean, it's like all over the place crazy <laughs> with what is loose in this country. And when we talk mm -hmm. about those old things, they're comfortable right. things that we talk about, but those are nothing to the real things that people are being painful with. If someone saw me smoking, I would just say, I'm a Christian. I, I smoke. I enjoy smoking. That's maybe something that me is not as good for me, just like many things are not beneficial for it to be. But as a Christian, I'm perfectly free to smoke. And if you smoke, so are you. But you need to do what's good for you. If you feel that it's okay. better, then All do right. it. Well, and let's, that's um, my position. Yeah, let's, let's move to, forward. Let's so walk down the street with Jesus let's move and forward. have him say, oh, hold it for we, a minute. We go, I want to catch a smoke. Wouldn't that bother you? That's what happened yeah. with Jesus when he was smoking. But if Jesus you brought up in right, Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Sheriff. Hold on. What you brought up in Romans, though, to me, is the key. Because with all of these things that people disagree on, whether it's lawful or beneficial for you. The point to me of Romans is, is that if you know there's any chance that you're going to offend someone That's right. or cause your witness to be questioned, then Back up. you're under and obligation again. to put your flesh That's under true. That's right. and, and do what Paul said. It's not a question of whether you can do it. It's mm -hmm. Paul says if it's going to hurt anybody else right. or That's your right. witness yeah. in their eyes, don't do it. And when you say that's a sign of spiritual maturity, to recognize, okay, this person, they have a different perspective on this thing. So I need to, but I'm gonna honor that. I need to be sensitive to that. Mm -hmm. I know that I'm under grace. Mm -hmm. And I can, I mean, if I really wanted to, I could, whatever, fill in the blank. But I know that you're, you may not see it that way. And it's, 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 it's a, it's a, a strong mature admonition position. from the Lord. Whoa, whoa be unto you if you cause any to mm -hmm. stumble. Mm -hmm. And how do we know the degree to what we're doing might cause that's true. someone else to stumble? I've, I think I've that's got a serious right. thing. I've got friends who've left the church because they were young in their faith and they saw someone in authority doing something they thought was completely... And they should tell the truth. Like, what is really sinful and what's not sinful? Why do we keep like, trying it's to... Not about, it's, not about about sin. it's not about sin. It's not about the behavior. Yeah. No, I feel like I, mean, you know, I know. I was, I was listening to Andrew. Like he was says, you know, he made a point. Okay. Some things are cultural too. That's it. Because he said that um, really he went to a certain country, and while he was preaching, he said, "Made uncomfortable." They would pass around free beer. That's just, right. Just drinking. Yeah. Just drinking. He said, mm -hmm. but they they thought smoking was a sin. Mm -hmm. He said that he went to another country. <laughs> he said you could drink and smoke. But, but you couldn't have but, coffee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but here's, so, here's the point. I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna wrap we this up. I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna wrap this up because 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 Terry said it. Because yes, culture, culture will dictate. Like culture will dictate certain 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 things may be sinful, or whatever. Like the whole thing that, that Andrew talked about with the beer. Okay, now and and smoking. Now, if I was in, if I was with Andrew, right. If I was part of his prayer ministry, and if I, if I knew everybody in there was offended by smoking, I, it would be wrong for me to light up my cigar in front of them after the service. It would be wrong for me. Okay, because it, that's that's not me walking in the fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, I have the freedom in Christ mm -hmm. to to enjoy that. But if I love those folks out there, mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that in front of them to create that stumbling block. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go to first Corinthians. First Corinthians. Chapter nine. Mm -hmm. Okay, in in my 
in the Amplified Study Bible, the, the, the title, the subject in this chapter is Paul's Use of Liberty. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to start at verse 19. For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a slave to everyone mm -hmm. so that I may win more for Christ. Mm -hmm. To the Jews, I become as a Jew so that I might win Jews for Christ. Mm -hmm. To men under the law, I become as one under the law, though not being under law myself, mm -hmm. so that I might win those who are under the law. Mm -hmm. Right? To those who are without, outside the law, I become as one without the law. Mm -hmm. Though I am not without the law of God, mm -hmm. but under the law of Christ, so that I may win those who are without law. To the weak I become as, as the weak, to win the weak. I become all things mm -hmm. to all men, mm -hmm. so that I may be by all means, mm -hmm. and in any and every way save some, by leading them to faith in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And I do all this for the sake of the gospel so that I might share in his blessings along with you. Mm -hmm. See what Paul is talking about? Mm -hmm. We totally get that, but you Paul, know. there's special situations and circumstances. You all are absolutely right. You don't go in somewhere just trying to tick people off and doing certain things. If you're going into a culture, mm -hmm. I'm not going to go in there trying to insult that culture on purpose. What I'm speaking about is just in general, walking around in good old America. That's it. Mm -hmm. or some other culture. That's all I'm saying. But what I see is Christians saying, oh, if you're a good Christian, you can't smoke, or you can't do this. And that makes people feel that right. if they are smoking, like my brother does, mm -hmm. and he stopped drinking, that he's a bad Christian. But he does smoking. Yeah, but that, that's, well, drinking, that's not, you know, that's not what we're talking about. But, yeah, but you know that's not what we're talking about. Like they're a bad Christian. Go ahead. Go ahead. Dick got something. I got a scripture for you in, in uh, Galatians 5, 1, because I was a smoker, and I smoked heavily, okay, for a lot of years, and uh, I would tell people, you know, it's because I liked doing it, and I'd lay my head on the pillow every night, just praying that I'd wake up and become a non-smoker, and I knew it was killing me, and, and uh, uh, but, but, so, in my mind, okay, I would describe that situation as me being in bondage, okay, I was, I was, uh, uh, I was not free. I was, uh, that, those things had me. Uh, in Galatians 5 1, Paul says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, mm -hmm. and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Right. Don't volunteer. Don't say, Okay, I'm, I'm going to have a cigarette. Just put me back in there. I'm mm -hmm. going back in there. Go ahead. Just slap them on me. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, for me, I'm just talking about myself. Mm -hmm. That's what I would be doing. Right. And That's I just course. don't want to do that. Yeah, exactly. I just can't do that stuff. Yeah. Now, for me, I see somebody mature smoking a cigarette. I don't condemn them. I just think to myself, where's this guy coming from? Where's his relationship with the Lord? Because the Lord doesn't want you to hurt yourself. And if your relationship's right, he's going to lead you to a place where you're going to quit. Right. And you don't have to condemn them. They know what they're doing. I picked up a guy hitchhiker one time, and he gave me the most wonderful testimony. And then he said to me, he found out I was a Christian. He said, hey, man, you want to go to the park? I said, what's going on at the park? He said, oh, we got a bunch of people over there with instruments, and we got some really good pot. <laughs> I, said, I said, dude, you just give me this testimony. I said, don't you know you're supposed to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit and not that? He goes, really? I mean, I was, he wasn't condemned. He right, was right, listening. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what we don't want to do is get to the whole finger pointing thing right. where we're pointing at other people. But the ammunition that, that the Lord gives is clear. You know, we have to check our flesh. And he tells you not to just intentionally hurt your body. You know. Right. Because it's not we are not our own. We've been bought with a price. Mm -hmm. And that's, so that's the reality. we're smoking and drinking and we eat. <laughs> you know. And that's not right. But no, it's socially but, acceptable. Yeah. Exactly. But it's socially yeah. acceptable. Yeah. And that's the thing. And we, you know, if, we, if we're going to be, if we're going to talk about our flesh, we got to deal with all our flesh. Mm -hmm. Not just the, 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 the type the of flesh. The ones that we don't do. They're they the ones we don't right. do. Oh, right. y'all right. need to stop smoking. Well, you ain't never smoked, but, we, but we, we, we touch your Merlot, we got a problem, right? Or we touch your Golden Corral, we got a problem, right? So, and see, and that's the thing. So we can't, that, that's not the whole point of what this dialogue is about. Because mm -hmm. just to bring it back, 
we're talking about being a witness. And we never and we never our lifestyle, our lives, we are living epistles. So we don't want to give the enemy opportunity to cross examine us mm -hmm. in front of the world. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I got one more. I, let, let's, let me go go to First Peter two. Mm -hmm. First Peter chapter two. First Peter chapter two. Mm -hmm. All right, Peter's talking about us. In verse, I'm gonna start at verse nine. Mm -hmm. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people, peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of Him who have called you out of darkness into His marvelous light, in which time past you were not not a people, but are now the people of God which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul, which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors, and unto them that are sent by him for punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. Now I'm, I'm going to read verse 12 in the New Living Translation. It says, Be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. Mm -hmm. Then even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your honorable behavior and they will give honor to God when he just judges the world. Mm -hmm. We live in, we, we, we are living epistles. People look at And you know, when they know you're a Christian, they're watching you like a hawk. Mm -hmm. you see know? what you're doing. And, it, and, it's, and these things are not to put us on a, in a position where we condemned or we under law. But it's just an admonition to say, you know what? People are looking at you. I got news for you. you people are looking at you. And it matters. And the scripture bears it out over and over again. Every book in the New Testament, the New Covenant, mm -hmm. every Christians. every chapter bears it out. Every chapter. But not All right. Christians are not impressed with Christians today. I mean, as sad as it seems to be. And why is that? Is know, why if, if, if we were doing this, if we were doing this, then they would be impressed. That's the whole problem. Oh, no, that is the problem because we don't. That is the problem. That is the problem because you can survey it. Because you could survey, you could survey folks. You could talk, you can poll people out here at Patrick Henry Mall. You could do that because it's it's the lack of power and the and the and the okay. sloppy living mm -hmm. and the the lack of power and sloppy living. Mm -hmm. Those are the mm -hmm. two major it's, condemnations against the church, right there. Not everybody that goes to church is a Christian. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot of people go to church are not Christians. 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 Mm -hmm. Just like the world. But, I mean, that's kind of how they look. Well, who cares what they think? Like? You put a lot of weight on what they think. I don't care what they think. It doesn't matter what they think. The weaknesses was about what they thought. And that's the well, your life so shine. Don't worry about what they, they think. Just be be what you were called to be, and they'll see the truth. That's right. The I Holy Spirit will reveal to them. I don't know what it is or what it's going to take to get them, but they're not impressed. And that's that saddens me, really. You know, because Christians are wonderful, good people. And they do try to obey God, and they want to go out and do good. And that, they get credit for that and everything. But it's really been blended. Uh, and I don't know, maybe it's come a lot more since before when Christians were running the country, you know, and they were really making a lot of decisions and things. But the voice, they said, shut up, don't even talk about Christians anymore. You know what I'm saying? That's your mm -hmm. private closet thing. That's kind of how they're trying to push us in right. the closet. And that's why we, that's why we had that whole, that whole yeah. lesson about government. Yeah, and how Christians, what our interaction, the, the the interactions we are supposed to have, because Proverbs says it: when the righteous rule, the people rejoice. When the righteous rule, the people rejoice. But when the righteous are not, are not in rule, you see the the chaos. You see the enemy having an inroad into society, to the mindset of the culture. 
But I expect people who are being led by Satan to find fault with me, no matter what I do. You can't. I, I expect and that, do. and do. I don't care. I really don't give a rip. I'm going to live a good life, a clean life. My neighbors know. Mm -hmm. They watch me. They watch her, and you know, and 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 they love us. And they're not Christians, mm -hmm. but they know. Right. And they come over for prayer when they get sick and mm -hmm. stuff. I mean, they know. Yeah. Well, that was a little testimony. Oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. My neighbor, we had them for dinner last night, our okay. two neighbors. And I prayed for the one. She had a back injury, mm -hmm. fracture, and they were considering surgery. Mm -hmm. And she said, I just want to thank y'all for your prayers because I went to the doctor and it's getting much better. Oh, and right. So right. this is coming from a non-believer. And he doesn't want to do surgery anymore. Mm -hmm. That's what she That's said last so night. You see? Sowing those seeds. But it's kind of hard. You go on vacation for two weeks and you come back and your neighbor's cutting your grass. It's kind of hard to look at him and say, man, I don't like that guy. What's he doing? You know? Seeds. Are you saying you, you were cutting his grass? Oh, we do that. We do that a lot around the neighborhood. If somebody goes on vacation, Just when they're, they they figure they're when driving back for 12 hours, right and the leaves, so. the last thing they want to do is cut grass. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, we're going we gonna to get to Point wow, that's <laughs> uh, The Lord would never give you a position without also giving you the authority to execute and accomplish what he told you to do. So you are in an empowered witness. So if this power to be a witness comes in authority to be a witness and all the responsibility that goes along with it. Peter exercised this power and authority to be a witness when he followed God's leading to Cornelius' house. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go there. Acts 10, starting at verse 1. Acts 10, starting at verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision, evidently, about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming in to him and saying unto him, Cornelius, and when he looked unto him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter, who lodgeth with Simon and Tanner, whose house is by the seaside. And he shall tell what thou art to do. Slip of point eight says, angels don't have the authority to preach the gospel. We do. We do. God has limited himself to preaching the gospel through people. Mm -hmm. Through people. See, God's plan is for us to preach the truth of the gospel and for people to hear it and be born again through the incorruptible seed of God's word. Point D, you can't pray a person into the kingdom of God. Okay. Now, let's look at point D and say, what is that not saying? Well, you can pray for that heart to be softened to receive. Okay. You can pray for laborers to come across mm -hmm. their path and for the, mm -hmm. for the spirit of uh, blindness to be uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Find the God of this uh, world that yes. blinds the children of disobedience. Mm -hmm. It's just saying there's no prayer. God save my sister, right. save my mother, save my uncle, Bob. Mm -hmm. The prayer of some laborers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Because what are we doing when we do that? We're, we're being skillful and efficient. Right, because all his will has already been declared. Mm -hmm. It is his will that none shall perish, but all shall come to the knowledge of the truth. That's his will. Mm -hmm. That's his desire. So I like what let's go there. First Corinthians four. No, second, second Corinthians, Corinthians four four. Four four. Mm-hmm. Second mm -hmm. Corinthians four four.
I'm going to start at verse 3. All right, and I'm reading it out of the Amplified, and it says, But even if our gospel is in some sense hidden by a veil, it is hidden only to those who are perishing. Among them, the God of this world, Satan, has blinded the minds of the unbelieving to prevent them from seeing the illuminating light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So, we desire to see our loved ones saved, mm -hmm. our friends saved, our neighbors saved, right? Mm -hmm. This is this is what we speak. This is what we rebuke mm -hmm. right here. We speak against the blindness that's coming over mm -hmm. their hearts, their, their eyes, because of the God of this world, the lies, the things that are that are hidden, that are hiding. The gospel from them from seeing the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. because it is the incorruptible seed of the word that creates the born again experience. If you don't receive that incorruptible seed, then there is no born again experience. And you know what the world knows, but everybody here has had an experience where you start talking to somebody. Not about the Lord, just conversation. And they'll they'll start talking to you, and then all of a sudden they'll say a curse word. And they'll and they'll look at you and go, Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. That happened to me in bed back and beyond. Now you didn't tell them when you were a Christian, but somehow they start to perceive from your conversation Maybe that you're different than they are. Hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean it's just it's just in people sometimes to know. Mm -hmm. And then the ones that want to aggravate you, they cuss more. <laughs> I get it on both sides. <laughs> I just can't imagine you ever getting anybody riled up to cuss at you. I get it on both sides. There are people who, you know, when they're around me, they will, they won't hmm. do it. You know, people they like, okay. Well, some of them they know you're a Christian, and because they know you're a Christian, they want to aggravate, they want to aggravate you. Right. It's almost like an attack. And that's when you can just rejoice with being persecuted. <laughs> right. Right. Look at that point three. It says you have to be born again by the incorruptible seed mm -hmm. of God's word. Mm -hmm. First Peter 1 and 23. <laughs> being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Mm -hmm. God's word is the seed. Now we're hearing the same thing over and over again. Every lesson we have about how important this is. How important it is for us to hear, to see what God is saying. Because it, it, this, the, we, we are a word, we are word beings living in a word universe. Words paint pictures. They communicate messages. It's all in words. So that's why it's it's it this this time that we have to spend with one another so is so precious. It's, it's important. That time we have alone with the Lord is so important. It's so precious because we are renewing our minds. Because every time you there's a, a word is spoken, when we communicate, we're not just communicating abstract, just words. They're pictures, they're ideas that are being transferred. I know some of y'all who listen to um, Brother Copeland, y'all have heard this example where if I were to say the word dog, you don't get the picture in your mind, D-O-G. You actually get a picture of the dog in, in, your, in your mind. I could say black dog. What am I doing? I'm painting a picture mm -hmm. with my words. I could say big, black, ugly dog. <laughs> I'm adding more to the picture, right? The more time you spend listening to words, it's just adding to the canvas of our hearts. So just imagine, just get that, that image in your head. When I'm sitting down, I'm reading. I'm reading the Psalms. I'm reading Psalm 91. 
Psalm 23. And I'm, I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to paint a picture inside of me. Me, under the shadow of his wings, protecting. I can see, it's, it's giving me the opportunity to get that picture on the inside. So if I pass WTKR, the, 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 say the TV's on, I hear about another murder. It's not going to affect me the same way if I done spent that time soaking in what God has said. Now, if I'm devoid of that time, what am I subject to? I hear that. It's more likely like, oh, Lord, I better be careful. I don't, I don't want to go down there street today. You know, that fear and that worry it has an opportunity to grow and to flourish. Why? Because I'm allowing that I'm allowing that to paint a picture instead of what God has said. Again, who is dominating our time? Whose voice are we listening to? Who's painting the picture? And to the degree that you renew your mind, that will dictate how successful your walk is in the Lord. Because you'll respond either with a renewed mind or with a natural mind. And when you respond with that natural mind, everything is woe is me. And you're in trials all the time. Because mm -hmm. I know me personally, I can I can tell when I'm, I'm my word level is low. I'm more irritable. More short. Things Ron, he doesn't get irritable, does he? Oh, Lord. Yeah, she, you see. <laughs> you need to call me next time. Gene, come over here and look at this right now. <laughs> It's it's just like a you know a when but that's when true a, for all of us, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It's it's true. Absolutely. It's true. Because those those things things are more, we are more sensitive to to fear. Mm -hmm. It's easier to get into fear mm -hmm. and I believe when that word that was low. Um for the be carnally minded is death, mm -hmm. but the be spiritually minded is life and peace. Mm -hmm. And that's just that's the story of my life. Mm -hmm. And and you know, I, I mean, I have these little, uh, it's, you know, kind of. I mean, when when I'm really have a lot of a lot of time, and I'm really in, in the middle of a good group of, you know, that's why you guys are so important. You know, and, and mm -hmm. getting in a group group of people, and I'm reading, I'm studying, I'm doing, you know, doing my, and then I get real busy at work and I'm mm -hmm. going crazy and I'm working, you know, till 11 at night and stuff, mm -hmm. a whole bunch of days in a row and I go, man, I'm getting dry, you know, and, and uh, so um, I, I, I think that uh, I, I'm, um, I mean, I haven't learned how to, I, don't, I haven't learned how to get through those spots and make the time happen, you know, and stuff and I'm, I'm kind of, I'm only about three, three and a half years in this, so it's, that's a real issue for me, and, uh, um, but, uh, but I do understand that verse right there, you know, mm -hmm. I do, and I mm -hmm. understand it because I've lived it, yeah, like you said, like I get dry, verse. and I get, you yeah. know, and I mm -hmm. gotta, I gotta get, I've gotta get with somebody, mm -hmm. and so. And it's all about perspective. Like, carnally minded is sort of like your senses, like your five senses. It, it goes yeah, back to yeah. Like it, 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 it goes natural, back to what we were saying. Yeah. Natural things. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, mm -hmm. Trusting on those as right. opposed to you know just a regular day to day grind. Because there's a lot of stuff God will show you to do that's not like it. And that's why I said perspective because you can look at a situation from a carnal perspective or a spiritual perspective, mm -hmm. and it's just a choice we have to make. Um, I think you had said, you know, um, well, I'll just say, you know, if, if things aren't going the way you need them to go, you're just having a rough week or something like that. You could, you could, like, I think you said, woe is me. You can get into that habit of saying, oh, here we go again. It's always something, you know, those kind of things that we rehearse in our minds. And that's a carnal perspective that keeps us Every time down on this level. Or something happens and takes it away from me. What if you look I, at that same situation from a spiritual perspective? Head, 
you say, well, okay, it's not quite what it's, this is not what God promised me. This is not what God spoke. Then that means he's not through. And if we look at it like that, there's still hope and there's mm -hmm. still faith in his word. Mm -hmm. And it, it, you know, so it always comes down to perspective. And it doesn't happen overnight. It's a That's constant, right. steady That's right. belief. Even, even when what you're seeing is contrary to what you're believing, mm -hmm. as long as when you're constant and steady, eventually those things around you start to conform to how you believe. It. That's right. And, but it might take a couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that's not going to happen quick. Right. I, I heard one of those uh, healing testimonies the other night. Mm -hmm. And it was the lady who, I think she worked for Kenneth Copeland, mm -hmm. and her husband worked for Kenneth Copeland. He had a big stroke or something, mm -hmm. you know. And that's the verse that God gave her. That listen, you can you can you can just go by what everybody's telling you and what the doctors are saying and stuff, and be carnally minded, and uh, um, you know you you're you, you're gonna have death, mm -hmm. you know, or you can be spiritual. <laughs> and you can you can believe. That this is the reality mm -hmm. instead of what you're seeing, and you'll have life. And she said, I just that's what I did. And the, I spoke against everything that those guys, said. you know, it's a, if you never want to listen to those things, they're just incredible. They're huge faith builders. Absolutely. Huge faith builders. Yeah. They're just awesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, to me, the thing that stands out is we have to participate in our own blessing, just like we have to participate in our own cursing. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. it's a choice we make. Am I going to believe the word? And now I'm a conduit for his blessing to go from a spiritual place to the physical realm or, you know, likewise with, you know, death in our bodies, stinking, thinking, whatever you want to call it, those kinds of things. We also usher those in through our participation. People, if you get that, that yeah, that's, <laughs> that's half the battle right there. That's it. And just like he said, he brought that up, that witness they are being an effective witness. Why? Because they are they are giving testimony mm -hmm. to what they've seen and, they've, and what mm -hmm. they've experienced by standing in faith and seeing mm -hmm. the manifestation of God's word. Mm -hmm. See, and ain't no you can't cross-examine that. You can't you, how can you destroy the credibility mm -hmm. of that witness? With something that you that you see, you know, you've seen what that person has been through. Mm -hmm. You've seen the fight and you see the victory. Yeah. You see the word manifest itself in that person's life. That's that's what we're talking about. And your personal testimony. I mean, I was blind and now I see. see. <laughs> who's going who's going to come against that and say, "Don't give me that stuff"? <laughs> you know. I mean, it's your testimony. That's right. That's right. And can you speak on this too? Uh, to talk about testimonies because they really do help me. And but when I listen to the Bible and it. It reminds me that is it kind of like Thomas needing to put his hand in Jesus' side as opposed to just believing what the word says? You know, if you believe God is who he is and everything he says is true and we say these things, but yet we need continuous testimonies. And I'm saying I'm in that boat. You know, it they help me, mm -hmm. but I don't think that they should be necessary, you know, like all the time. Uh, when you've been a Christian for a while in particular, uh, because it's like, do we have to keep putting, it's like, why isn't the word enough? You know, when we read the Bible cover to cover, what is it about us that we don't just take that word and say, this is it. You know, it's like, you need those little boosts. It's nice to hear that God's alive and he's moving in people's lives mm -hmm. and it encourages everybody. Our testimonies are Important. That's what I said. And, you know, I said that exact thing. Yeah, but I said, should we need it? You know I think God created us. Here. To, we are the body of Christ, and yeah. we're not just alone. So I think He created mm -hmm. us that we need exhortation from one another. We need mm -hmm. that encouragement. It's just part of who He made us. Mm -hmm. I'll also say, you know, if we're honest, we get weary sometimes yeah. in standing on the word. And that's why He put scriptures in there that says, like, be not weary in well doing. You know, for in due season, you will reap if you pay not. Well, how do you keep on going? We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. It is the testimony of others that remind us, yes, indeed, if He did it for that person, He'll do it for me. And I think it's a reminder that our carnal side just takes over. 
often. And we got and then oh. it, it takes us back to our normal five senses. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we should stay on the word, but then we get back to our five senses. Well, you know, they're not and a bad battles, thing. No. Your five senses are no, evil. No, it's anything. when you're depending on it for the word of Christ mm -hmm. is all I'm talking mm -hmm. about. Not that. Yeah, we need our five senses. But mm -hmm. when you say, I'm going to believe this word of God mm -hmm. for healing or finances or whatever it is. But mm -hmm. yeah, I need to hear a hundred testimonies. You know, I need to hear a couple of days. I don't know about you, but on. when my body's aching and stuff like that, yeah. it helps to hear a testimony because I don't feel like doing I much agree. anything. It helps. So and then, in the bed. But, <laughs> the, the, yeah, I know what you're saying, but see, oh, the, thing, yeah. the thing is, is like, I we got to realize we're, dude, his word should be enough. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, we but we are living in a world that's going contrary to that. Mm -hmm. We're constant, constant onslaught. We're going this way. The world is going this way. Right. So that's why he he gave us the command to forsake not the assembling mm -hmm. of ourselves mm -hmm. with one another. Why? So we can encourage one another. Because we can't do this deal. Right? Uh, no. Uh -huh. mm -mm. Look what happened to John the Baptist. John the Baptist baptized Jesus. Okay? <laughs> the Spirit of God came down like a dove. Everybody saw it <laughs> and heard the voice of God saying, this is my son who is his wife. But after he was in prison for a couple of years, he had to send his disciples out one? <laughs> to ask him, are right. you the Christ? Now, if that can happen to John the Baptist, who Jesus said was of, of men born of women was like the greatest mm -hmm. of all. If that can happen to John the Baptist, mm -hmm. it can happen to me in a week. <laughs> I've got to stay connected. You know, I do. So, what did he tell John? Yeah, he, he told his disciples. We go back and look at the Blind saying, mm -hmm. Blind saying, the dead are well, he, yeah. read, he read scripture to him from, that was from That's Isaiah, right. and John knew it. I think that's what uh, John knew it, and Jesus performed it. Right, mm -hmm. right. Exactly. And I think those are clues to power that we don't continuously maintain in our life. Now, why are we greater than John the Baptist? <laughs> My wife and I had that question before the cross, after the cross. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the whole deal. I like to hear people's testimonies. Mm -hmm. Me too. I mean, it reaffirms the word. Well, it does. But I just, I just like to hear what God's doing in yeah. other people's lives. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that I need to hear them because... I've got a lot of testimonies myself. God mm -hmm. is always working in my life, but I just like to hear what He's doing in everybody else's mm -hmm. life too. And sometimes you, they're so good, you go, "You're kidding me, really? <laughs> God did that?" Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just blows your mind. Yeah, yeah. they're yeah. fun. Yeah. I think about those who are persecuted. I'm still kind of on that tip of the weariness part, but mm -hmm. there are people who are going through some real turmoil for the faith. They need. A testimony from from time to time. And China now is starting oh to really come down on Christians. I mean, they're, they're really going after. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm. I was. I'm a partner with this mm -hmm. ministry here. We'll they, pass it around. They talk about you know the the persecuted mm -hmm. church, and you know anytime you know I I kind of feel like feel some kind of weight. You know, just remember. I just need to remember. Remember. Um, just the ability to, to, to do this freely tonight. Mm -hmm. I ain't got to worry about Nupa News police busting up in here. <laughs> we can freely do this in broadcast mm -hmm. across the, the world, right? But my brethren, across the across the country, mm -hmm. across the world, they got to hide mm -hmm. caves. One thing for this. Weren't they giving out solar powered Bibles at one point? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That they could hide, they were concealable. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Like um, audio some of the, yeah, some of the little, works little, that, like, that, um, that yeah, like. some of the works that's going on. Um, because you have, but what they do, they have like um, this so they have solar powered audio Bibles, and also they have like solar powered projectors with the Jesus movie on it, and then they have like the whole Bible on it, and then you know what they'll do is they'll go to the villages and they'll show the Jesus film, and then they'll you know give give uh, altar call draw people to Christ and then disciple them with the with the audio Bibles and stuff. It's, it's cool. Mm -hmm. Some of the work that's going on in the world. Being a witness. Being where where's the church grow the most? Under persecution. That's right. China. Well, we so many people in China, China became like Christians under the persecution. We got to be careful when we say that around. Mm -hmm. They'll say, see, it's God's No, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> I don't want to open that camera. Mm -hmm. Let's look at point B. It says, 
God's well. Point A, God's word is the seed. Point B, it must be planted in the ground that is a person's heart. You can't be born again without faith, and that faith comes through the seed of God's word. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Let's look at four. It says many Christians are praying for people to be born again, but they're not praying about the planting of the seed. There are ways you can pray to speed things up and enable the Holy Spirit to minister to this person more, but just praying, asking God, please save them is useless. Prayer may help once we've already shared the gospel, but it's not a substitute. That's the same as praying, just healing. For doing <laughs> what God has told us to do. Same thing for yeah. yeah, same thing. The Lord knows that as people receive the truth into their hearts, it will make them free. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Um, John 15, Ronnie, you um, had some revelation about that this, this past week. Can you share that with us? John 15. I don't like when you do that. Um, be specific. Because we're talking about <laughs> because we're talking about we're talking about the word and um, about how important it is to be connected, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm gonna start at verse one. I'm reading Amplified. John, chapter fifteen, starting at verse one, and it says, "I am the true vine." In my father's divine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that continues to bear fruit, he repeatedly prunes. So that it, it will bear more fruit, even richer and finer fruit. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. You are already clean because of the word which I have given you. The teaching that I, I have discussed with you. Look at verse 4. It says, Remain in me, and I will remain in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit by itself without remaining in the vine, neither can you bear fruit producing evidence of your faith unless you remain in me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So um, I was I've been meditating on this this chapter just for my own personal development and just remembering how important and crucial it is that we stay connected to to Christ. And I mean, there's a lot of things I could pull out of here. I'm not really sure what you are. Um, the connection yeah. between witnessing and, I mean, it's important to bear fruit mm -hmm. so that the world will see Christ in you. That's right. They ought to want what we have. I mean, that's that's really what it comes down to. But um, Yeah, that's right. Because scripture says, taste and see. That the Lord is good. Mm -hmm. But if our fruit is rotten, they don't want to taste it. Yeah. Don't nobody wants rotten fruit. But me abiding mm -hmm. in the in the vine, then that's giving that's putting me in a place where my, my fruit is going to be sweet. Mm -hmm. And people can tell. I know my wife can tell. She, you know, when the times that I'm I'm in the word and I'm a lot more present pleasant to be around. But if I'm worried about bills and, and that, that's all I'm doing, I ain't spending no time in the Word, no time in prayer, then, you know, I'm short, irritable. Not that bad. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And why is that? I'm not, I'm not abiding. I'm not abiding. Aren't you glad I never did coffee? <laughs> 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 she ain't she quiet, keep saying that. My quiet on the side of the table. <laughs> <laughs> I will not rat you out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just me, and I don't care. <laughs> uh, I just want to say um, I agree with Ronnie because joint hands are not mm -hmm. they're being connected. So the only way you can stay connected mm -hmm. is being about a good vibe. That's and right. And mm -hmm. so 
is if you're not studying the word and you're not circling, I, I, I like to circle the word because you, you end up in the other world and you come in contact with some mess. And I was listening to what she was saying and that came across to me that she was saying, I don't want to depend on the, the testimony of God. It didn't matter that testimony is going to be based on the word of God and how God is looking at it. And so all this, that's still taking stuff in, helping you stay connected mm -hmm. to the land. Mm -hmm. And it's like she was saying, she wants to hear grown up people lie. A lot of times you'll be going through something mm -hmm. and just hearing that testimony. Yep. And then you yep. saying in the word, you know, and like Ron was saying, sometimes we need that word. We need to hear what people are saying when it's based on the word of God. And you can, and like Jesus said, that fruit you can tell is good fruit mm -hmm. because that anointing. And God's presence is going to permanent the whole congregation. And it makes a big difference. Well, when you hear a good testimony mm -hmm. based on the word, and this is what God did for me. Well, God's no respect of person. So what if he did it for you? Yeah. That encourages me. lifts up my hope yep. because he'll yep. do it for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, it's it's confirmation as well. Um, when when you when you you hear a word, it kind of resonates with you. Like, wow, that was for me. That was for me. And if you hear a testimony and it goes along with that, now you, I mean, it's just confirmation and it mm -hmm. affirms what you've already mm -hmm. received. Um, but going back to John 15, and we were talking about abiding in the vine, it's, I mean, what does that even mean, abide? It's where you dwell, it's where you remain. And if Christ is where we remain, I mean, what we, we know that he's the word made flesh. So really, you know, what we need to understand is dwelling in the word, spending time right here, just extracting these truths. And I mean, a lot of people are saying, well, where do I start? What do I do? Um, a Psalm, a proverb, just something that you can take and hold on to throughout your day and doing it consistently. It's amazing how a lot of things will get purged out of you. It talks yes. about in those first few verses, um, I have my different translation tonight, but um, he cleanses and repeatedly prunes every branch that continues to bear fruit. And I had to deal with that, that verse. So he takes away those branches that don't bear fruit, but then he, pur he purges those <coughs> that do. And if you have a doctrinal slant that might be a little faulty, you're going to say, well, if he, if he prunes those and he, you know, he scourges those or whatever the, the term is in there, he, depending on your translation, <coughs> you're going to think, well, you know, he's going to punish me. If I don't, if I don't bear fruit, he's going to punish me some kind of way. He's going to make it hurt so that I will bear more fruit. No, that's not what he's saying. What in my studying, he's freeing you. He's freeing you to bear more fruit. Think about the parable of the sower where you have the vines that tangle up in that, that healthy plant. Well, what's he going to do? He's going to start to cut some things away so that that healthy plant can thrive. And so that is who we are. We are connected to him. We are fruit bearing, not because we're so great, not because we're such good, wonderful Christians, but because we're connected to Christ, because we're, we're flowing in, in his goodness and his righteousness. That's who we are now. So by virtue of our faith in Christ, we bear fruit. Please understand that. Mm -hmm. yes. the, those, um, the, the way that he purges us, is what I'm saying, is, is we are free to continue to bear fruit. And I think that's an amazing way to look at it. So what's a practical perspective of that? Um, a person. In your garden. <laughs> okay. You prune your roses mm -hmm. to get more fruit. Cut your group, prune your grapes. Mm -hmm. That's all. Whatever. And Whatever you guys, it is. you guys can give us perspective this because you actually we were just talking yeah, about you how you're going to punish you bad roses. No, I'm gonna get it. No, <laughs> you're making more roses. Yeah, they get long and leggy and mm -hmm. they're not pretty, so you prune them mm -hmm. back and they and they start to flow. Yeah. yeah. Well, so for us, let's look at our minds. How many thoughts travel across your mind in the course of a day? I'm some of them are good. Them. Some of them aren't so good. And. It's not so much that we produce those thoughts. Sometimes, like you said, you watch the news and now your mind's on this track of, gosh, there's a lot of murder and this and this and that. And what if I murdered somebody? You know, you, have you ever just thought like, um, just, could I do that? Could I do something so horrific is what I'm saying. And now your mind is on that, those negative thoughts or whatever it may be. But as we continue in the word and we 
we grow through just reading this and, and absorbing it into our hearts. Suddenly now, you know, a lot of that clutter gets cleared out and it's that Christian perspective that we come back to, or rather I should say that the spiritual perspective that we have towards even our thought life. I think a lot of the negative things that choke out the good fruit start to get purged out as we spend more time here and not out in the world looking around. So, I mean, I just I keep going, um, but I, I love this. This and is my passing, favorite you know, and I would pray, you know, okay, Lord, give me give me peace. I'm going through something. Give me peace. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going through this. Give me joy. Mm -hmm. You know, give me you this. Have it. Give me that. You already right? have But I'm saying, <laughs> I learned, okay, if I want peace, it's in the Word. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. I want joy, I got to go through the Word and get it. Okay? Mm -hmm. You know, it says faith come out. If I want faith, it's in the Word. Mm -hmm. So, Stop praying to him. This is the water. Right. I've already I've already got it, but how I get it is through the word of God. So, isn't there a scripture that says the washing of the water? But it's a funny phrasing. Right. So the word is like water to the soil of your heart where there is dormant peace. There is dormant joy. It's always available. But as you, oh God, no as you read this, this it's peace. watering. And those seeds are... And what happens to yeah, What happens to the seed once it's watered? Mm -hmm. It's nourished, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's nourished and it starts to, 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 to bloom so others can see. But we're praying for it. Do you know what scripture that was? The washing of the water. I get really good at asking Bob. When I need peace and joy, I need to go thinking, okay, I need peace. I say, Holy Spirit, I, you know, I've got the fruits of the Spirit in me, and love and joy and whatever those things are that I need are already there. So I just say, Holy Spirit, help me to draw on those, make those real to me now, because I'm not, you know, whatever. But I, I recognize that those are already in me. Help me, you know, to draw on them and, you know, benefit by them. Mm -hmm. you know, another scripture says, my peace I give unto you, and the world gives to you. Bob, what was that? Mm -hmm. Say again. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's, um, yeah, I do remember that. But it kind of clues us into how the word operates. Yeah. Terry was reading the book uh, this week. And she was talking about that when you first saved and your mind is being renewed, you you you're starting to be cleansed from uh, the sins of the flesh. Mm -hmm. And then she said, "There's another deeper thing that begins to work in you, which is the the, uh, the the sins of the spirit." And I said, "How can your spirit have?" And she said, "It's false doctrine." Mm -hmm. And you start to get straightened out on false doctrine, which was as a result of speaking in tongues. Oh, see, there Wait, you go. You was um, already on the same wavelength. Yeah. That's why I was going there. You. Can you explain that? <laughs> yes, that, that, that as you, as you, just speak to, in tongues all the time. There are some people who only preach about oh the power that you're getting. You're edifying yourself, but that's not all that's happening. Yes, that is happening, and you're praying out. You know, thinking of the future and whatnot. But you're also that's that's part of the sanctification process. Mm -hmm. We're being purged of things in the soulish okay. realm and when you really know that, that it's happening is because all of a sudden you come to what he calls an impasse where you mm. don't want to pray in the spirit anymore mm. because your emotions if you're you have confronted something the holy spirit has allowed something in your soul that needs to be gotten rid of mm. to come up and you have a choice i'm either going to keep pressing through mm. praying in the spirit and get mm. this out or you're going to shut down and it's not only things of the soul, but it's also those spiritual things, be it wrong doctrine or whatever, okay. that comes out. It's all, and so when you feel that mm -hmm. resistance, the enemy doesn't want you, that's why the enemy doesn't want us praying in tongues. Mm -hmm. that, that because so that's also perfect. renewing your mind. Mm -hmm. We have the mind of Christ in us, and that's one way that the mind of Christ mm -hmm. comes to us, mm -hmm. is praying in the Spirit. It's mm -hmm. not only reading the Word. That's right. That's right. Where, where, where is this teaching? Um, Dave Robeson's book, The Walk of the Spirit. 
Yeah, the walk it's, of the spirit and the walk of power. I would, you, you I would get recommend it. that book more than any other on Tom. He, he followed every major faith healer like in the country. For years. <laughs> <laughs> and he would ask them, how did you get your power? Share books. Some of them had an answer. Yeah, well, the same book. So finally, he locked himself in the closet and started praying in the spirit eight hours every day, 40 hours a week. Because he figured if he did that, mm-hmm. work 40 mm-hmm. hours a week, got God got the pain. At school? Yeah. After three months, somebody school. came to him and, okay. and said, Red. How you doing, David? He goes, not real good. He said, my lips are sore, my throat is sore. Because all he'd been doing is praying in the spirit and playing Kenneth Hagin books. And when he went to the Baptist meeting, he said, he said, a lady was sitting next to him, and when he looked, he said he felt like he had an x-ray vision. He could see her hip was down, and boom, she was healed. And then he prayed for other people, and they were healed, and the Baptist didn't like it. And... uh Everybody there got something, and then he left them at home, and uh, they almost threw him out, the leadership. And then when they came to bring him back in, they said, we're going to let you come back tonight, but you have to go in the basement. He said it was like a dungeon. And he said, you thought, no, I'm not going to the basement. You have to let me have the main floor tonight. Dave Robeson. Go on the internet and look up Dave Dave Robeson, uh, heel slip, crippled boy. What's the name of that book? The Walk of the Spirit. The walk of power. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No relation to the Paul. Is it Paul Robinson? That's a different guy. A different guy. All right. Now, before we we close off on point five, I want us to kind of talk about the tongues piece for a little while because when we talk about being that talking about being a witness and having the power to be a witness and the the bearing the fruit to be a witness, this is spending time a part of our intimacy with God. Is praying in the spirit, mm-hmm. and I'm telling you, this it, it is such a refreshing mm-hmm. and empowerment um, to spend time praying in the spirit. So let's go to Romans eight. Romans eight, and we're gonna look at verses twenty six, twenty seven. Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 27. All right, in the Amplified, it says, In the same way, the Spirit comes to us and helps us in our weakness. We do not know what prayer to offer or how to offer it as we should, but the Spirit Himself knows our need and at the right time intercedes on our behalf with sighs and groanings too deep for words. And he certain he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is because the spirit intercedes before God on, on behalf of God's people in accordance with God's will. So we have the Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside of us, right? So we spend time, we we give our give our time to spend Pray in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit Himself is praying the perfect will of God through us human vessels. Mm-hmm. And that's where you get to verse 28, because praying in the Spirit makes all things work together for good. You'll hear people preaching on everything working together for good, but that comes from praying in the Spirit. That doesn't come from just, you know, walking down the street. Put it in context. The Spirit helps our infirmities, and go down to verse 28, and we know all things work together for good to them who love God, to them who are called according <coughs> to His purpose. And that's from praying in the Spirit. Everything works together. Okay. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians 14, and we're going to look at verse 2. We're going to look at verse 2, and it says, For one who speaks in an unknown tongue does not speak to people, but to God. For no one understands him or catches his meaning, but by the Spirit he speaks mysteries, secret truths, and hidden things. And if we look at verse 4, verse 4 says, One who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. But one who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but one who prophesies edifies the church, promotes growth and spiritual wisdom, 
devotion, holiness, and joy. Jude says the same thing. Mm -hmm. Jude says, building yourself up in your in most holy faith. faith. Yeah. Yeah. In your most holy faith. So you see how the... Go ahead. My pastor in Colorado Springs had a church for about 1,200 people, so there's no way he could minister to every person. He had him as an instructor, so personal ministry. And he told us this, that people would want to be counseled all the time. And he had no time for it. And he would tell them, I'll counsel you on one condition. Speak in tongues for a half hour every day, mm -hmm. and I'll see you next week at some point. Mm -hmm. And he said, 90% of the people would call him back. They didn't come counsel. around next week. Because <laughs> <laughs> they get their answers. Mm -hmm. so that's the only way I can serve this congregation. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. so Building yourself up. You must follow that Jude. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was awesome. We'll go there. What did Jude? All right, I like you. Let's never find you. I know. It's just one page. Page. It's it's one page. One page. Page. Thank you. <laughs> 120, right? It's the, it's the last book for Revelation. Mm -hmm. Wait, what? what? Matthew 476. Who's halfway the third? Uh, I was, I was, I was, verse 20. I was, there we go. I got it. I do. All right. You, can you read that? And I'm going to read it in the Weiss translation, I think. Good. Go ahead. Uh, but you, beloved, building yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. In the Kenneth Weiss translation, it says, but as for you, divinely loved ones, <laughs> building yourselves up constantly in the sphere of and by means of your most holy faith, and as constantly praying in the spirit of and by means of the Holy Spirit, verse 20, 21, with watchful care, keep yourselves within the sphere of God's love, mm -hmm. expectantly right. looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, resulting in life eternal. When we says it, we I can't add know. another word. It's been said. I don't have one of those. <laughs> it's good, man. Because how can you, how can you, the Holy Spirit himself dwelling on the inside of you, right? And so it's God, all right, dwelling on the inside. He's using your mouth to pray the will of God because yeah. you, because you as a human being have authority on the earth, <laughs> but the Holy Spirit is praying through you to declare the will of God. Perfect prayer. So don't you see why there's been such an attack on this this yes. teaching? Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's why it was so. That's why I heard all the jokes in the Baptist churches I came up in, where people just wouldn't even talk about it at all. That's why. That's why it was because of the power that's here. Because mm -hmm. Paul said it in, in First Corinthians fourteen. I wish that I, I pray and tell more than all y'all. Mm -hmm. Also in um, Ephesians 6, it's part of the armor too. But it says on verse uh, 18, it says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. What's the other one says? Uh, uh, I have the tongue of men and of angels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's this verse. Was that in the yeah. Um, Ephesians 6, Ephesians 6 um, 18. 18, right? 18. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because if you look at that, that's the that's the armor of God mm -hmm. portion, right? And that's the one offensive weapon we have. Mm -hmm. Everything else is defensive. But the sword of the Spirit is offense. Offensive. That means you're kicking butt and taking names. There you go. <laughs> I think I um I had to teach that at one point. I had Julius as my um to help me demonstrate, and we had a mock fight. This man went down like a ton of bricks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was funny. At the sword of the spirit. Yeah, one of our little um yeah, what they call the I. But he got the point across. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was fun. It's funny watching him down here. <laughs> I didn't expect him to go down so easy. <laughs> she just did. She was sleeping on my acting skills. That's all. Yeah, no, that's what it was. <laughs> anyway. 
Now let's let's close on out here. Let's look at point five. God moves on this earth through his people. Point A, he moves as we preach, teach, and act on his word. He moves through us as we obey the promptings of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to read that again. <laughs> he moves through us as we obey the promptings of the Holy Spirit. God told us to influence our nation by ministering his word because the number one power of the church is the proclamation and demonstration of the gospel. And this is what this is the point you were making sure about how about how we we the 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 weaker we have gotten in this is the reason why the world is the way it is. Right there. But are we going to give up and join them? Or are we going to be a white? Yes, sir. There you go. Right? Yeah. Right. A lot of pastors have watered down the gospel to get big congregations. Oh, and it's those people that the world's looking at and calling them Christians. Right. Well, I'm not necessarily sure they are. You know, I think they're in a big club and they're having fun every week and, you know, listening to the rock music and getting good messages. But, you know, I like that you uh, brought out B the way you did because without listening to the prompting of the Holy Spirit, we could try to save everybody we come across, beat them over the head with our Bible, and, and, and you know, all the things that people have done over the years, and it does nothing to draw people. But if you are just living out your life out of the fruit of your relationship with Him and, and hearing from God on how to address certain people, that does so much more than, you know, like a, a, an evangelical kind of ministry. You know, and when you're loving all of them, there's no defense. That's right. They can't defend themselves against you being kind and loving. Mm -hmm. They just can't. And the most hateful person. I mean, yeah. They just back up and and, and can't can't come against you. I think about how you know you get a lot of people uh, who will ask for spare change and stuff like that. And I mean, I have my own thoughts and I won't share everything. But sometimes the Lord will lead you to give to a certain person, and guess what? When you do. That may be the answer to a prayer. They said, Lord, if you're real, I just need five bucks to get whatever. And if you're the one to, to do that and you say, you know, the Lord mm -hmm. told me to give this to you. Mm -hmm. That means much more than you saying, you know, you really should get saved. You really should, mm -hmm. you know, or, or just giving to everyone. Or, or yeah, you, just you meet their physical need first. I, yeah, I'm a firm believer in that. Yeah. Then you put yourself in a position to speak into their life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be spiritual. What was it saying? Be blessed and be be warm. Be warm and fed. Be warm and fed. I'm going back to my house and I'm going to eat. Right. Stay out of the cold. That's right. That's right. I like that because James talks about that. Because um, true religion, true religion. I, I, yeah, we got to go. We got time. <laughs> we got. We got time. Let's go to James, mm -hmm. chapter one. James chapter 1. And we're going to look at, we're going to look at verse 27. Chapter 1, verse 27. One twenty seven and amplified says pure and unblemished religion as it is expressed in outward acts in the sight of our God and Father is this to visit and look after the fatherless and the widows in their distress and to keep oneself uncontaminated by the secular world. So true religion. Do we have true religion? I have a question on that. Okay. When I look through the Bible and see all that they were doing, they were specifically dealing with the Christians coming in. You know what? Their church. 
and they were dealing, they had the list for the orphan, I mean the widows, they had recommendations. You know, it wasn't just about going out doing it to all the world. Mm -hmm. They were taking care of Christians and they were beginning to build very specific rules for Christians. Mm -hmm. And then of course, as your Christians are stronger, then they can go out as disciples and bring more people in. Mm -hmm. But today, it just seems like it's anybody. And mm -hmm. then you even see people doing things and they really don't even preach the gospel or things with them. They just can have a food kitchen or something. They go and get their food and they go. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like here we have a special thing when I've been looking at like them and they were specifically having these rules for Christians. Right. Like how how we you deal with your your own flock, your own yeah. community of believers. Yeah. And Jesus said, He mm -hmm. said what? They will know you by the love that you have one for another. So much about Christians first. Right. So if we fussing and fighting <laughs> one amongst one another, both of us got the Christian badges on, <laughs> the world see that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, they ain't no different. They, they tripping. Mm -hmm. Right? What type of witness is that? He said, don't even go to court against one another. It's not. It's you open up a, a program, if you open up a giving program to everybody, you, you don't have enough resources on earth. Mm -hmm. You'll have people coming for their mortgage payments, their electric payments, their food payments. Mm -hmm. And some of these folks are like serial yeah. church people. They'll go from church to church to church to church to church. Sure. Just try, and they're bleeding like resources off everybody. Mm -hmm. But you, you have to really be particular because, you know, your resources are limited. Mm -hmm. And if, if you got your own flock there, they come first, in my opinion. Because I've seen, I've been in churches where we've opened it up and just run out of everything. Mm -hmm. You know, because the word got around, and boom, they were, you know, they drained us. And remember that one man that told another lady about where you can go get yep. the free food? And she got there before he She did. got the he last bag says, of groceries. You got my bag he of food. He said, I told you about this place, and you got my bag of food. He was mad. <laughs> <laughs> the one day left when you got up? No. Yeah. The, the lady the he told to come got there ahead of me. We got the last bag of groceries. Wow. And he said, you took my food, and I'm the one that told you about this place. <laughs> and it's about taking care of the flock. Oh. And you get something special when you become a Christian. So you know what I'm saying? Well, if you hear that there's a church that if you get sick, they'll pay your mortgage, or you get under in time, they'll bring food or pay your electric bill. All of a sudden, you're more tempted to say, wait a minute. They're acting like Jesus will want them to act. Maybe I want to go there. You know, I think, I think it's a draw when they're taking care of their own. Right. And I mean, and I, you can't combat what Jesus said himself. Mm -hmm. and you, they will know you yes. by the love that you have one for another. And that's that's our that's the part of our witness, us walking out our witness. I saw where an assistant pastor actually quit the ministry. He was in a church and he said their mortgage payment was uh, I don't know, hundred thousand dollars a month or something. And he said there was a lady that had been in that church for a long time. She was losing her home. And they couldn't help or keep it because mm -hmm. they were so in debt to pay everything. Mm -hmm. And he laughed. He said, I don't want to be in a gigantic building with all these people and not be able to help the people mm -hmm. themselves, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm going to close out with this last verse on my outlines. First Corinthians one twenty one says, It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching mm -hmm. the gospel mm -hmm. to save them. That would be the foolishness of preaching. Proclamation, proclamation and demonstration. Walking in love. All that stuff works together to for us to be the light that God has called us to be on the earth. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. For faith without works is. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Facebook family, we thank you once again for joining us, and we will see you next week.